Hey, welcome to uh, this video. So this is just going to be a time lapse of a character I just made uh, named uh, Danny Phantom. And I made this for uh, for my member section, but I just wanted to add a time lapse uh, to show anyone who is interested just to see maybe what my process might be in creating a cartoon character. So the uh, first thing that I'm going to do is just find the uh, reference so that um, on the bottom right that uh, posed uh, Danny character is the one that I was given in my discord channel and uh, What I did after that is I went to uh, Google night actually typed in character sheet to get a few different angles of the character uh, To see how his hair looks in the back and what the what does the outfit looks like in the back? so I did that and then uh, as a first step to uh, Model the character. I actually instead of using a sphere like I normally do I, I just grabbed a, an existing base mesh that's uh, that exists in the light box, uh, kind of like that anime uh, head, and it was already really close to what I needed to be. It had the uh, kind of the facial features and the pointy nose and all of that, so it was a really good uh, start starting point. So I did uh, I used that, and uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm kind of step by step breaking this into little pieces, um, initially just looking at the head only. So creating the space for uh, for the eyes and then bringing in the um, eyebrows and kind of getting those into place. So kind of dividing or dissecting everything into little mini steps instead of looking at the entire uh, character. So at this step right here, you can see I'm just inserting a cylinder for, uh, for the ears and uh, then of course mirroring it to the other side. And then I'm continuously kind of aligning it to uh to the reference image and this is uh, an interesting point so i'm using the pure ref to look at the reference images but then i'm also um i also use spotlight as well right i brought in the screenshot of the image and then i kind of use that to overlay um, and just making sure i get the proportions and the scale right uh, here you see me doing a mouth and i was debating on whether i should build like an actual 3d mouth or if i should just draw it and create like a mix of 3d and uh, 2D, and so I ended up just using Damien Standard and just literally just drawing it right onto the surface. The next part that I was kind of uh, anticipating, uh, I thought it was gonna be somewhat difficult, is creating this hair, right? Uh, the hair is super unique, and there's probably, you know, dozens of methods that I can think of, of how you can create hair by, you know, inserting base meshes or using existing hair brushes. I just decided to bring a, a sphere in and use that as a starting point and just literally just kind of create the major shapes of where I need the hair pieces to be. And then once I did that, I uh, Z remeshed it and uh, continuously just added more and more uh, detail by sculpting on it and then creating kind of a sharpness to it, right? Get away from that, uh, you know, that sphere feel uh, that I initially used by using brushes like Damien Standard and just a little bit of pinching, a little bit of uh, trim dynamic. Just kind of going back and forth until I kind of got the uh, result I wanted. So I was pretty happy with that. So this is the, uh, the point where I finished the head and uh, I did build it symmetrically, right? Um, to make sure that I have the eyes and the ears kind of uh, easy to, uh, to copy over. But at this point in the sculpt, I decided to go ahead and move forward with the dynamic pose. So creating the body, just kind of blocking it out by importing things like uh, mostly cylinders, right? You could see um, this character is mostly just a bunch of cylinders and then I use the sphere um, for the feet. And uh, it's kind of tricky, right? Because I'm trying to only look at one uh, view of the reference and I don't really have the 360 view. So once I um, Kind of uh, got the proportions right and put all the pieces in place um, i began to jump out of the spotlight mode and started to kind of rotating uh, i started rotating the uh, uh, all the pieces and just making sure they look uh, really good from every single direction which is somewhat tricky uh, for the fist to create that cartoony fist um, i just went with a box and uh, literally just kind of blocked it out and once I blocked out all the fingers, I tried, uh, you know, my best to stick to the reference, uh, creating a little thumb on the side and just giving it that cartoony fist 
uh, feel just like I'm seeing. And once all the pieces were uh, merged together, um, I just completely just dynamashed the whole thing and just started kind of, you know, uh, smoothing it and creating it um, as one big solid piece, right? Uh, here you see me uh, cupping over the arm and it was probably super silly to create two two arms with two fists so um, it would only make sense that I made one and just copy it over and once I've done that the uh, the final step was just to add a little bit of a poly paint um, right here in ZBrush and I show how to do that uh, step by step as well and by the way the entire process took about an hour it's a step by step video um, where I took through every single tool and the reason it's being used and how it's being used and if you're interested in that video uh, there's going to be a link below and that's going to be in my member section so um, you are welcome to um, to join and check it out and see if it's helpful I actually um, I'm collecting a lot of really useful videos where I spend a lot of time teaching ZBrush and if you want to learn uh, I strongly suggest you uh, take a look where by step by step we're just creating creating a lot of really fun characters and also if you join my discord uh, you can request characters and we can build them together and then you ask you can ask questions and um, and you know just have fun learning right so uh, at this point you can see me uh, using poly groups to control the poly paint and just kind of using the reference to uh, to add some of that final detail. For the logo, I literally just took a brush and uh, painted the logo myself instead of projecting it. And uh, that's kind of the, uh, the final result. All right, so uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in our next one.